Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we have another episode of Do That Diff. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, I'm excited for this one also. I know. So Melissa said that she was excited literally right before we started recording and my heart dropped. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I... Um, You've always been such a wonderful friend and and everything, but you have a little bit of a sadistic side to you, so I'm I'm getting ready. You know, the the listeners are gonna think <laughs> that I really do have a sadistic side because Kyle said that in the third one. I think I it was the third one, and now you're saying this in this one. I'm not that bad. No, you're not. You're not. But I think you do. Uh, um... I think sometimes you enjoy watching people squirm, but that's okay. Just a little bit this of squirming. A, yeah, it's just, and, and this is a fun educational exercise, squirm. So yeah, uh, and I mean, we all make our students squirm. So yes, yes. So this is the this is the the it's coming back to us, right? Well, so. I mean, you were also my student, so it's just I know. natural. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to ever say that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> Professor okay. Melissa. So. We have this do that diff episode where we have case number five. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. think? So I'm looking at the CBC. Uh, white count, high, uh, high normal, um, but it doesn't look crazy. Red count five uh, with the hemoglobin. Um, so yeah, it's when I start looking at the red cell indices, it's really looking at all of them all together. <clears throat> oh, and I forgot to put it in here. This What's is that? an eighty-two-year-old. Oh, okay, all right. Eighty-two-year-old um, female. That's helpful. Hmm. So yeah, first thing I see: red count um, looks okay. Uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit suggesting an anemia, um, slight anemia, and uh, MCV of sixty-three. MCH kind of tracks with that MCV. And the MCHC looks okay. Um, RDW 26.9, so super high RDW. And platelets are um, slightly elevated. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so, in the CBC, I'm kind of thinking um, something's going on with the red cells, obviously. And we'll have to kind of dig a little deeper to... Uh, um, but like, I'm not necessarily thinking of an iron deficiency, but I wouldn't say it's totally ruled out by this. How come so, you're not thinking that's... iron deficiency? So the red count of five is like, is fairly high. I mean, it's not like high, but it's fairly high. So um, it's high for iron deficiency. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially for a true iron deficiency. And especially um, with that MCV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. So, you know, um, but you know, I don't want to rule it out. So there could still be some kind of like iron restriction. So I'm still thinking about iron deficiency, chronic, uh, anemia, chronic inflammation and, um, and then thalassemia I'm thinking about as well. So, and then looking at the diff, uh, it's, uh, you know, we might say a reverse diff. So limps are elevated, um, but not crazy. So, uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be focusing on my red cells I think a lot here. But um we'll see. Are you, are you ready? I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready for the diff itself. I'm excited. Nervous. If you ask me like my worst fear is to like look like a fool in front of everyone, so You'll be All right. Ready. So <clears throat> I'm seeing sort of a mononuclear sort of population here on this first uh, look. I see some smudgies. And I'm actually also thinking about, I don't want to say like um, Rouleau agglutination, but I'm looking at the red cell pattern a little bit closely here. It looks a little strange to me. Okay. But uh, yeah. So smudge cells and then the age, I'm also starting to think about CLL and things like that. So, yeah, I see some neutrophils at least in this uh, in this field. Um, well, that makes sense with the auto diff. Yep, 
Yep. Yeah. So that that's a, that's a good point, right? So thinking about the auto diff and then what I'm initially seeing on low power, this makes sense. I don't see any real crazy discrepancies. Would it be too much trouble to just look at the feather real quick? Thank you. So I just want to look for like extremely large cells or anything like that. And I don't see that. So thank you for looking. I think we can go back into the body of this mirror and so we can increase that magnification. Oh, wow. Is that good on the light? That is good on the light. Holy crap. <laughs> cool. I'm a little stunned. Okay, so, so talking through it. So crazy amounts of hypochromia and yeah. then not so much, right? So um, don't forget we're the, on 40. Yeah, we're on 40. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so I almost feel like there's somewhat of a dimorphic population, but there, there also appears to be perhaps some agglutination. So we'll see about moving around in the area um how we yeah. can get this to look but I'll man, go a little bit thinner yeah sure thank you oh wow yep yep i'm getting uh hollow jolly bodies nucleated red cell um awesome codocytes so yeah all right, cool. Um, if, if you go thinner, does that agglutination still hang around? Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. So now I can see the pattern. So I'm seeing some red cells and like the, the way the red cells are like lining up looks like you're in a thin area, but I'm still seeing these, uh, these chunks of red cells. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Um, Okay, so I think we can go to uh, a higher power. Is it oil? Yeah, yep. yeah, we can go to oil. As I uncap my oil. <laughs> yeah, I like asked as you were like holding it. <laughs> yep. Is this good or too bright? Beautiful, Beautiful. perfect. Um, so some burr cells, tons of codocytes. Um, the RDW is kind of bearing out here. Um, so there's a Howell Jolly body here. Howell Jolly, yep. So we likely have an asplenic uh, patient. Looks like there might be another one there. <clears throat> I'm also kind of trying to be careful and look for uh, Pappenheimer bodies a little bit as well. They might be tougher to spot. Here. Good, thank you. Good. Yep, yep, I'm seeing more paps. Cool. So yeah, like instinctively, I'm starting to think about like thalassemias and stuff. Um, but there also might be some kind of a cold agglutinin disease. Um, yeah. So now let's start to look for our white cells, because now I want to see the limps a little bit. Let's go smudgy. And a neutrophil. Yeah. And just for reference for everybody watching, all of this stuff is junk. Just junk. Yep. Thank you. Ooh, look at this right here. There's three beautiful Howell Jolly bodies. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. So we definitely have uh, an asplenic patient. Looks like this kind of over here. Yep. So, you know, if a patient's without a spleen, they likely had some kind of um, inherited disorder. So my guess is thalassemia, given the codocytes, um, but they could also have uh, other things going on. Um, but. Let 
the site, I think. So yeah, what what I'm looking for now is is uh um I'm trying to look for like soccer ball sort of patterns to make sure I don't have anything that looks like a, a CLL. Um, so definitely a lot of lumps, but they look pretty normal. Normal. All right. So I feel uh, uh, less and less confidence about like a CLL, but you know, still possible. I go a little bit thicker. Thank you. These kind of sites are nuts. It's just the sites. Okay. So I think I got the data I need. So first of all, it seems like a, uh, a thalassemia patient and I would say like a cold agglutinin. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that the, that's the, the likely kind of diagnosis. Yeah. Okay. So, so I agree, but, uh oh, but also CLL. It's, it is a CLL darn. So I I should have been a little bit more patient perhaps in uh, looking around, but um, I'm happy that that's where my mind went in my differential diagnosis. Okay. So let me kind of talk through. So given the patient's age um, and they are a female, and I think the, typically we see it in older males, but certainly we see it in females uh, um, as well. It might be more of like a one third, two thirds kind of a split between the genders, but um, and uh, seeing the agglutination, uh, autoimmune disorders and CLL are like like hand in glove. Um, you just they're so common to see those things uh, together. So, um, did did you say does she the, have a thalassemia or something like that as well? Or it didn't say, but I'm assuming it looks like she has thal, like a this codicides it crazy yeah. yeah 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 so um cool okay so yeah so i was looking for the soccer ball pattern that is not diagnostic right uh it's well, also mm -hmm. not a critical finding in and the, you won't always find it absolutely yep so um so yeah that, that would have been kind of neat if i could have morphologically seen that and had a higher confidence to say such but uh cll cool. should absolutely be looked at with that differential split and i think it w was partly the the way the diff is but also like you said when you were scanning on 10 how you saw smudgies yes i think it yep. was the the diff with the smudgies so the smudgies. Like 60 whatever percent limps with the smudgies really makes it kind of well it's probably a cll yeah the the smudge cells typically in my experience you're either thinking about cll or some kind of reactive process yeah. And I thought for the most part, the limps looked pretty normal. Some of them had a bit of a basophilic cytoplasm, but they're not highly reactive. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to keep reactive process kind of in the front of my mind and it didn't seem like it was there. So, so all the things were kind of pointing towards CLL. Yeah. Um, but thing, yeah. You can see it in this limp here. There's a little cleft in it. A little cleft. Yep. This, yep, this yep. one's and, only a little one, but the the results said clefted limbs present. So there's probably way more clefted limbs. Let's, let's, let's look around and see if we can see more. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. 
I would also be interested to see if there's some kind of a dimorphic uh, population here in the transfusion status of the patient. It wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it because the RDW was so high. Huge. Yeah, yeah. That was through I the mean, roof. The other reason the RDW could be through the roof in part is, one, the agglutination. But two, I don't see much polychromasia, but it could be that there's some retics coming out with the thal giving you bigger red cells and smaller red cells. Yeah, you know another interesting point too. Um, the MCHC sort of suggested to me, uh, you know, pro probably not uh, iron deficiency. Yeah. And now that it, I'm thinking about it, the red count and the MCHC, um, the agglutination could have really played a role in uh, in those numbers because this red count, I'm willing to bet, is higher than five. Than it's expressed in the CBC. And I bet that MCHC is lower than 30, 31, whatever it was. I agree. Super cool. But I like this one. And this one, so just for everyone's know, I randomly pulled this case out and was like, here we go, do that diff. I have <laughs> never even looked at this slide. So this is a great one that I randomly picked out for this because you're if you're really seeing how we talk about the diseases, like we talk about Dow, we talk about CLL, like we talk about them in their own little like boxes, in their own troughs. But really, patients can have Dow with CLL with a cold agglutinin. The yeah. thal is not related to the CLL or the cold agglutinin, but the CLL and the cold agglutinin are related to one another and just very cool. Yeah. It's it's like the there's all these layers, right? And um and those layers of data can kind of uh you know uh, make it tr tricky. So so you'll fixate on something, right? And then maybe lose track of the bigger picture. So all right, cool. I'm gonna pat myself on the back slightly, right? I think okay. I uh my my heme brain worked like it's supposed to. Also, as you look around, I'm seeing a lot more like schistocyte, yes. um, like crazy stuff, and even a spherocyte or two. Okay. Um, so all in agreement with some kind of uh I mean the other uh, thing is with the number of schistocytes, what else is going on? Uh so some kind of intravascular fragmentation hemolysis. Yeah. So you know, um it kind of depends, right? Um, I was thinking maybe additionally a warm, but usually yeah. ones you don't see the schistocytes as as much. It's usually the spheros. So so I don't think it's it's outside the realm of possibility that we have some kind of a mixed um, uh, autoimmune. Absolutely, yeah. So the fragmentation hemolysis and the spherocytes um, kind of suggest uh, two different kind of processes, perhaps maybe, um, where the uh, um, we might have a more complement mediated. Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, I have the albumin if you want to look at it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Let's take a peek. How sure. thorough to have both of those slides. That's awesome. I know. So, yeah, just uh, in context, it was procedure at the institution Melissa and I worked at where if there was a certain number of uh, smudge cells, we would prepare an albumin smear to try to preserve the... Um, the broken cells. I'm interested to see how much more the agglutination looks. Like. <laughs> holy cow. And then holy platelet clumps, Batman. Like what's wow. going on with that, huh? Wow. We didn't see platelet clumps in the other one. I don't recall. Nothing of this magnitude. Yeah. And and, and then it, so that kind of speaks to something else, right? So um, you can certainly see platelet clumping. You know, I think the first place my mind goes with platelet clumping is the draw. Uh, didn't yeah. go so great. Maybe a slow draw or something like that. But in the context of autoimmune now, I start to think. Of... Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. So I'm just freezing on this lymph. Yeah, I know. Me too. Really basophilic. Yeah. And but... so another um con contextual piece to this is albumins make things look way scarier <laughs> than they actually are yeah. um 
and also just keep in mind that we don't evaluate red cell morphology or platelets on the albumin but right. this this is why because it's so much more striking on the albumin than it is yeah. regular yeah and i wonder if there's something if there's some kind of um antibody on the platelet surfaces and something about the albumin is like i don't know so the other thing too is like a 450 platelet is like on the the higher side it is when you look at the platelet histogram does it look pretty even yeah it doesn't look bad yeah so this might be some kind of a weird there it is so this lymph right here has those deep purple kind of they're not as neat as like the, the typical starker ball you can see a couple of the limbs so these limbs would have made me in the moment say ha i really want to rule out cll here yeah and you're talking about this guy here with these that that's the one that stuck out to me and then uh, uh and the ones that the one in the corner, the those other limbs too look pretty consistent with the sarcoball pattern. Let me just draw what I what you mean. So Thank you. these are the circles that he's talking about. Remember, I think in a soccer ball, you have those circles, black and white circles with like the the, the sewing in between. These mm -hmm. are the kind of circles that you typically see when you're looking at a CLL, and then you have those, you know, those stitchings in between mm -hmm. in the soccer ball. So this is one of those soccer ball style limbs. Mm -hmm. This one, especially the other two, I can see it, but it's really prominent in that that middle one. Yep. And that, that's the way you instantly, you know, <laughs> when you're cruising in your scope, you see it and you stop and you're like, eh, I want to look at that a little closer. Well, now I want to go back to the other slide and look for I'd look at the playlists. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Maybe we look a little bit more at the feather and at the... Um, periphery the edges i love doing these this is, my, this is probably my favorite thing that we yeah uh, we do yeah i mean i don't see they're all here they're all yeah. spread around there's no clumps let's go Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that there, um, perhaps there's some kind of uh, antibody, auto auto antibody binding to platelets, and the maybe when they made the albumin, the slide was cold. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know, but that's really weird. It is strange. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Interesting. Okay, well, is there anything else you want to say about this slide? No, no, it's a, it's a great teaching slide. Um, great case to work through, and I think it's uh it's a good signal and reminder for everybody like that's out there learning hematology, um, the autoimmune, hemolytic anemia, and CLL. They're very not all the time, but very common to have both of those concurrently. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Well, <clears throat> that's all we've got for this video. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.